Okay, so what's auth, why do we have it, and how does it work? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. So imagine this really common scenario where you have a user who has an app, and that app is going to do something like post to Twitter for them. OAuth works on a lot of different sites. It's not platform specific, but we're going to use Twitter as an example in this video. So if the app is going to post to Twitter for me, Twitter needs to know that I have given the app permission to do that. Otherwise, any app could post to anyone's account and do whatever they wanted, and that would be bad. So the way that we normally post to a service is that we log in, we give them a username and password, and then that shows that it, we have our own account and we can post to it. But if we want to give that permission to an app, one way that we could do it is to give our username and password to that app. But that's not especially secure. That means the app has our username and password, which may let them do all kinds of other things to our account. And it might let them get into different accounts where we have the same username or password. So we don't want to be just giving away usernames and passwords to apps. Instead, OAuth was created so we can give permission to that app and the app can prove that it has our permission, but we don't actually have to give it our credentials. So there's a little dance that goes on between the user, the app, and Twitter, which we're going to look at in a minute. And that allows the app to have a little token that it can show to Twitter that says it has permission to post for us. Twitter knows that it's legitimate and it allows it to actually post. So the idea is that it makes it more secure to give authorization to some third party program like an app or a web service to access a site, whether it's Twitter or Facebook or Google on behalf of a user. So let's see how it works. There's a kind of complicated process at the beginning to get all of this authorization done. So we have two kinds of tokens we're going to be looking at here, a request token and an access token. The request token is what kind of circulates around when we're first giving that authorization to the app. So it's used to authorize someone to access your account. Once the request token has gone through all the steps, it gets turned into an access token, which the app has to allow it to access your Twitter account. So we're going to have three entities here, the user, Twitter, or some other service that uses OAuth, and a lot of places do, and a third-party app, like an app that you might write. We have to have a whole bunch of exchanges go on here. So first, we're going to have the user install an app. Uh, so they go get that third-party app, and they download it. And then the app says, hey, I post to Twitter. Can you give me permission to post? And you have probably seen this with apps that you've downloaded, that they'll request access to all kinds of different things. So when the app requests access to the user's Twitter account, the user can say OK, but the user doesn't want to just hand over their username and password. So the user says, OK, you can have access to Twitter. And the app is going to ask Twitter for a request token. Twitter says OK, and they're going to send that token over to the third party app. Now, this token can't do anything at this point. It basically is Twitter acknowledging that the app wants to access your account, but it doesn't have access yet. Right now, it just has this token that we want to get gold starred to say, OK, it actually gives us access. So right now, there's this kind of worthless token that Twitter has sent back to the third party. The third party then sends that token over to the user, and the user is going to authorize that token. So they're going to say, hey, if you have this, I'm going to show that it means you have access to my account. So that requires the user to talk to Twitter directly. The user is going to tell Twitter to authorize the token, and it sends that token over. And then the user has to show that they're the right person. So essentially, they're going to log into Twitter. And again, you may have seen this in certain apps where it says, oh, we want to be able to post to Twitter or Facebook for you. And it sends you to Facebook or Twitter to log in and give it permission. Once you do that, you get a little gold star on that token. The token is now authorized and gets sent back from Twitter to the user. The user can then give that authorized token to the app. And so now the app has this token that is approved by the user, that Twitter knows the user has approved. And then the app takes that authorized request token, sends it to Twitter, and asks to exchange it for an authorization token. So the request token just shows that the user has approved the app to use their account. The authorization token is what the app is actually going to use to post. So Twitter turns that request token into an authorization token that goes back to the app. And now that's what the app 
keeps. And so anytime the app wants to post to Twitter, it sends that token over to Twitter. Twitter acknowledges it and sends it back. Uh, now in both connections between the app and Twitter and between the user and Twitter, there's also a secret. And if you've looked at APIs, you'll see that there's a secret that goes along with access tokens or authorization tokens. That's a secret known between the two parties, either between the user in Twitter or the app in Twitter. And it's kind of like a password. It's a shared thing that Twitter and the app or Twitter and the user both have so they can prove that they're the right person. Uh, that means I can't come along and pretend to be you to Twitter because I have to have the shared secret that we have. And so now that the app has this authorization token and it has a shared secret with Twitter, it sends that token every time it wants to post. Twitter verifies that the app has access to post, which it does because it has this access token, which it got because we went through that request process. And you're all set. Now you can use OAuth as an app to authorize you to do the posts. And OAuth was involved in that whole initial process to give that authorization to the app.